Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are with the third part of our ongoing series on visibility of divisible. In the last video, part two, uh, we have addressed some questions like. Does the strategy one that you have presented in the first part of the series, uh, does the strategy one give test four for t equal to seven? That means test one, two, three, we have applied for different primes two, three, five, eleven, and uh, a non prime nine. Uh, and then test four was discussed in part two uh, using our strategy one, but we got, of course, a rule. But a new rule, not the popular one. Okay. And we discussed also that what is the mathematical rationale behind strategy one to work. And does strategy one apply for any general P? Well, uh, the questions remain unanswered after part two to be addressed here in part three today. And these questions can be framed like Is there any other general strategy you can call strategy two, particularly because and how does it work? Uh, because uh, we have not got the popular test for p equal to seven by strategy one, so that's motivated. Uh, that is there any strategy two, and that would be discussed here. And is it applicable for any p in general? Okay. So the popular test for p equal to seven is the motivation. I declare. And it goes like that that you have seen that uh, we need a C much smaller number from S by this way. N is a truncated number after dropping the A0 digit and multiplying by 2 and then subtracting from N. Okay. So that is the test for, for example, 154. So after dropping the last digit 4, we get 15 and 4 into 2 is uh, okay 8. So 15 minus 8 is 7, which is divisible by S, uh, 7. So uh, the given number S is also divisible by 7. So that was the uh, strategy for t equal to 7, a popular one. But uh, the question is 2. Why n minus 2 a 0? Is there any general principle whose automatic choice is 2 for p equal to 7? Or what are the other choices for other p values? That is the question. So let us go for strategy 2. This is for p equal to 7, a specific one, but in general we can say that c is n minus r is, where r is 2 for p equal to 7, otherwise for p equal to 3 it is r. So the question boils down to what is or are those r values, and of course r is an integer. So our prescription we propose that r equal to p k minus one whole divided by k, where p is the given prime and k is zero or plus minus integers. That ensures that r is an integer. Okay, this r is an which is two in this part. So that is our prescription. Why this is so? That will come later in a while. For example, your p is seven, and we have used k three, and that gives you and ensures that r is p into seven minus one that is twenty by ten minus twenty. So that gives you the popular test r value here. Good. So we have used k equal to three. So I repeat that we have uh, searched that k equals to 3 uh, or p equal to 7 ensures in this formula that r equal to 2 and then we have applied for 791 by dropping 1 from 791 we get 79, 790 uh, sorry 79 and then uh, 2 into a 0 that is 2 so 79 minus 2 is 77 divisible by 7. Okay. Uh, but interestingly uh, this is not the only unique choice of k equal to 3. You can try with k equal to 13 and then you will see that p k minus 1 is 7 into 13 minus 1 by 9, 10 and that gives you 9. 
So 79 minus 9 into 1, R into A0, A0 is 1. So 79 minus 9 is 70, of course divisible by 7. So the given number is divisible by 7. So uh, it may so happen that uh, you can have uh, different choices for A and hence R for a given P. In that case, either you can take the minimum value of R or it is up to your convenience, but all will work. Okay. Now the question is most important question strategy 2 for other P value. How do you get by simple same formula PK minus 1? Okay. So, uh, for example, uh, we have already seen that uh, for P equal to 3 now, uh, we have already seen for 7, now P equal to 3. So, 3 you can search for K to ensure that R is an integer, then you will find that K is 7. So, 3 into 7 minus 1 that is 20 by 10 is 2. So, R equal to 2 again for P equal to 3 and for P equal to 11, again you see that K is just 1. So, 11 into 1 minus 1 by 10 is again an integer part. So, we have got uh, the values k equal to 7 for p equal to 3 and we get r equal to 2. So, 339 is an example. You drop 9, you get 33. Your a0 is 9 and your r is 2. So, 9 into 2, 2 is 0. So, 33 minus 9 into 2 and that gives you 15 which is divisible by 3. Okay. So, another example is P equal to 11 and this time your search gives you K1 for P11 and to get integer R1 and here is a 4 digit number, you drop the last digit to get 124. Now, you subtract 1 into 3, 1 because R is 1 and A0 is 3, so 1 into 3 and you get 121 and that is divisible by 3, okay. Now, uh, you can search. Uh, for k values for uh, in fact any p in general here we present a table uh, for p equal to 13 to 37 if you want you can give a pause here and note the values of uh, particularly k and r for different p uh, and you note that in some cases i have mentioned a couple of k it may be more than that and we have used of course one of them but you can use the other one as well to find uh, that the final result gives you uh, whether the number is divisible uh, the corresponding p or not. okay uh, so uh, in doing so even if you get a quite big number here in the first step you can repeat the same step by uh, treating this c this c as a phrase s and we apply again the same one that you can okay now why or how does strategy 2 work? This is very important. So, C is n minus R a 0 and we have prescribed R equal to P k minus 1 again. Well, so S after truncating the number you can write in a fashion that n and a 0 right and uh, in decimal number system we can say that this is the uh, digit at the unit place and, and this n value is uh, a number at the 10th place. So, s is 10 into n plus s that you can write. Right? For example, for 789, n is 78 and a0 is 9. So, s is simply 10 into 78 plus 9 so, that you can write. So, s is 10 n plus s. Now, what will or s minus a0, if you bring a0 from right to left, you get 10 s. Fine. Now, a trick subtract 10 r a0 from both sides of this equation to get s minus a0 minus 10 r a0, and on your right, 10 n minus 10 r a0. Okay. A little bit of manipulation we will do. Uh, so, here we will take common A0 uh, from here and here. So, you get 1 plus 10 R and here we will take common 10. So, you will get N minus R is left and right. So, now you keep your S on your left and bring all the other terms on your right. So, 10 
n minus r a 0 plus a 0 into 1 plus 2 a 0 into 1 plus 2. So, I repeat you get up to this point this point. So, we can demand that s to be divisible by p the right hand side has to be divisible by ok right. Now, that means it requires both 1 plus 10 r and n minus r a 0 to be divisible by p fine. That means you have to find a suitable integer r so that 1 plus 10 r is divisible by p fine. And the, what about the other term n minus r a 0 and that is our checkpoint in our strategy that it has to be divisible right then only s is divisible. So, we are concerned for the time being 1 plus 10 r that has to be divisible and how for a particular suitable r. So, in other words if c equals to n minus r a 0 is divisible by p then s is divisible by p provided 1 plus 10 r is divisible by this right. So, again I repeat the same equation. Now, the question is how you can ensure that 1 plus 10 r is divisible by p. It means that it has to be integral multiple of p, right. So, 1 plus 10 r has to be integral multiple of p. That means, in uh, other words, you can say that 1 plus 10 r is k into p, where k must be an integer, including 0, maybe plus or maybe minus. So, that is quite sure. Now, a simple manipulation gives you r that k p you take 1 from left to right. So, k p minus 1 and then divide by 10. So, you will get r and that is exactly what is our demand for r in C expression this r. So, that is our description that we have described right. Well, so far so good, but a few more unanswered questions remain. First, can we extend this strategy to to get yet another general strategy 3? Next question, and if I can, then how does it work? What is the mathematical person? And again, is it applicable for any p in general? So, uh, all these answers will be coming up in the next video Visibility of Divisibility Part 4. Until then, thanks for watching. Thank you very much.